All right, we're gonna move on to chapter 11 on capacitance. So to start off, what is a capacitor? Um, so a capacitor is something that holds charge and the simplest um, capacitor we talk about a lot is a parallel plate capacitor. Um, so we talked about the electric field for two infinite charges of, uh, infinite planes of charges and a parallel plate capacitor is modeled as two infinite planes of charges. Um, now, obviously they are not infinite, but usually infinite is a very good approximation for the cases we're talking about, because usually the separation between the planes is much smaller than the actual size of the planes, which means that, um, that you can neglect the, the extent of the planes. So the, you know, the, you need a to have a, to store a lot of charge, you need a very large surface area. So in practice, if you were to try to have a very large, two very large parallel plates in a circuit, you would need a lot of space for your circuit. So there's actually a cheat that works really well, which is used in most of these, um, in, in many capacitors, which is that you take your capacitor and you roll it up so that you, um, so that you have, it, it's not really um, a plane, it's a spiral, but given that the separation between the, at the scale of the separation of the two sheets, it doesn't, um, you can't really tell that much. Um, just like if you're on Earth, you can't tell that it's not, that it's a sphere and that it's not flat. If you're on the surface of the Earth, it looks flat and like an infinite plane unless you travel very long distances or can see very, very far. Okay, so a parallel plate capacitor has two plates of opposite charge. Um, we typically measure them, we assume that they are planes, um, and that they are usually rectangular, they have a certain area and they're separated by a distance D. Um, you can make a rolled capacitor by using some type of material between them, which is, in, which is insulating. Um, the material can be dielectric, and we're going to talk about that later, what exactly that means. And in many ways, they behave about the same. Okay, so there's a lot of equations here for different shapes of capacitors. As for what you should actually commit to memory, because physicists are not memorizers, it is probably worth remembering some of the basics for the um, parallel plate capacitor. And I will admit that I never committed to memory anything about spherical or cylindrical um, capacitors. So we start with the definition of capacitance, which is the amount of charge on the capacitor um, per, uh, per unit um, voltage. So then um, you actually can derive that from our two infinite, the electric field for our two infinite planes of charge was the surface charge divided by epsilon naught. That is also equal to the voltage divided by um, the separation between them. Now, the total charge on the plane is going to be equal to um, the density of charge per unit area times the area. So you can then um, write the, um, or you can also say that sigma is Q over A. So you can relate the total charge on the plane to the electric field. Um, and the electric field is the voltage divided by the distance. So you can derive this equation, which this is specifically for a parallel plate capacitor, whereas this is the definition of capacitance. Um, so what you see is that the electric field is proportional to the charge for these parallel plate capacitors. This is a bunch of pictures of capacitors. Um, uh, in the lab, you're going to work with some capacitors, um, and usually you can, um, well, your PA is going to tell you what they are. If you actually see them on circuits, then on circuit boards, you'll, you'll recognize what these are. Okay, now this is aimed at physicists. Physicists look in this go, why do I have to care? Because you're gonna end up working with electronics if you do anything experimental, I promise you. And at some point you're actually gonna have to, to work with, with physical electronics. 
Um, so it is worth sucking it up and learning about it. Okay, so there's different ways to make a capacitor. Um, this is a clever device, a variable air capacitor. So the, um, the material between the plates is air. Um, but you're actually changing the effective area of the plates by um, by being able to turn them around and, and you know they don't they don't interact with each other. You know, you're, the place where the two plates line up can be the size can can be changed. Okay, and a really really cool application is that you can actually model a lot of what goes on as cells as um, being similar to a capacitor because there is a net negative charge inside the cell and a net positive charge outside of the cell. Um, and this actually creates some really strong forces. And these ion pumps in the cell wall, um, there's a lot of ion pumps in the cell wall, um, and they actually keep that potential. And you can, you know, this is, for instance, how uh, the, the neuron works. And there's a fun application, which is how they actually learned about um, how neurons transmit signals. They actually used a squid giant axon, which was large, which is a neuron that runs from the int over the entire length of the squid. And they could put little, it's so large, as large as a millimeter, um, that they could actually stick electrodes into the cell and measure the potentials as, as they sent a signal down the neuron. So they could actually see what was going on. So it's pretty cool. You should watch the video. <laughs>